So today I'm sharing five tips that I found helpful in becoming a good uh, storyteller with your photography uh, work, especially for documentary work. Tip number one, develop a strong conceptual framework. Before diving into a project, take a moment to map up your story. What's the message you want to convey? What are the key themes? Having a clear roadmap will keep you focused and ensure your images have purpose. Let's take an example of, you know, documenting uh, pollution in a local community. Start by understanding the story you want to tell. Is it about the environmental impact, the human struggle, or perhaps the need for change? Define your message in key themes. Um, let's say you wanted to focus on the impact for, you know, future generations. Next, outline your narrative structure. Think about the beginning, middle and end. Consider the moments, the characters, the events that will reveal the challenges faced by the community. As you delve deeper, ask yourself, what elements will best convey the story? Is it the polluted landscapes, the affected individuals or the community's efforts for a cleaner future? find visual elements that align with your narrative. Because remember, a strong conceptual framework acts as your compass, guiding you through the project. It ensures your images have purpose and coherence, resulting in a powerful visual narrative. Second tip, do your research. Thorough research, become an expert on your subject matter. Dive deep into books, articles, and interviews. And if the research cannot be done, you know, online go just without your camera do your research talk to people you know interview people uh you know just like wear your camera but don't take any pictures you know get that community habituated with the fact you're oh you're the camera guy you're the guy with the camera all the time and you're not just you know go in there you don't know anybody and you just start clicking like start building a report but we'll get more uh, in depth uh, in the next point, but research on the ground and online, get as much information as possible. And tip number three, connect with your subjects. It's all about building trust and forming a bond. Uh, spend time getting to know the people you're photographing, you know, listen to their stories, share a laugh, and show genuine interest. The more connected you are, the more authentic your images will be. If you genuinely care about what the other person has to say, they will let you know their truth. You might say, you know, I'm an introvert, I'm a shy person, you know, I, can, I don't get along that easily with people. Uh, you know, I'm the same way. I mean, for me, it's, this is really difficult to do on the ground, uh, especially with people from different cultures, from different backgrounds. The secret to this I found is that you're interesting just by being interested. I'm gonna repeat that. You're interesting just by being interested. If your subject sees that you're really interested in them, in their story, you want to con convey their truth because you want to show the, the reality of, you know, of their lives. Tip number four, seek unique perspectives. Ditch the ordinary and think outside the box. Use, you know, specialized lenses, uh, ultra wide lenses. Maybe you can use one of those tilt shift lenses. You know, the sky is the limit. Like, the more you let your imagination go wild, the more interesting the result can be. You know, experiment with angles, compositions, and viewpoints. Show the world a fresh and captivating side of your project. Don't just try to mimic of a work that has been done, that work has been done. You know, take some inspiration from it, if you will, but try to do your own thing. And you have to experiment. That's why research is really important. Finally, craft a narrative with your image. Uh, for me, this is, this is the most uh, difficult part because uh, sometimes I got, get really trigger happy and I take a lot of images and uh, then through the editing i found that i have way too many images to sort through and since you get really good doing this so you have a lot of good images a lot of keepers but that makes your job of you know creating a cohesive narrative out of those images uh, really hard so 
for me, I struggle with that point because your photos should tell a story uh, like it's like a visual symphony, if you will. Pay attention to the order and the arrangement of your shots. Create a rhythm that captures attention and evokes emotion. It's all about captivating your audience. And here I think you should probably like simplify your gear. The simpler the gear, the more focused you are on the field. When doing research, figure out what kind of lenses do you need. For, for most human subject based projects, I usually pack like a 35, 50 millimeter lens, sometimes a combination between a, like 124, 150. You know, sometimes you have to keep it simple, stupid, you know. <laughs> One project I just went with uh, this camera, which has like a 35 millimeter lens, and I shot the whole project just with the 35 millimeter lens. I found at some instances, I wanted to have like a, a longer, uh, lens but since I shot everything in 35 millimeter it created more of a cohesive narrative and when you see the succession of the images because uh, in this, this specific project is still uh, under construction because I got problems uh, with access but sorting through the images that I got I can start you know building a cohesive narrative and then when I go back next time I know exactly what kind of images do I need. Imagine you're working on a documentary project about you know, migration. Uh, you have a collection of powerful images showcasing different aspects of the migrant journey. Uh, now it's time to craft a compelling narrative. Um, and here uh, I also have a, a project uh, going on in the same sense, but I can show you images of that can be the intro of this narrative. Uh, the first image is because th these migrants, they always flee the country using boats. So I went to one of the marinas where they can go and I found this uh, ship with the country's flag torn in half. And I've waited for the perfect uh, timing with the wind and I captured that image and I straight away knew that this image can be used as the as an intro, it can be used as the cover. Luckily, I found uh, a guy who went out for a swim uh, in that marina. Usually people don't really swim there. And that was the second image. And I can start better on that. Because you can tell a story and the subject can be an idea, can be a metaphor. Doesn't always have to be like the same person in the story. It can be about, you know, other people. And especially if you're doing like one of my long-term projects that I've been doing for like the past six years, it's uh, about the identity crisis in this country. The photographs, you will see a lot of subjects, you will see a lot of people. They don't interconnect directly, but they interconnect on other levels. And by doing research and by especially sequencing the, those images, they can make sense. And since most of the images were shot using uh, uh, similar lenses, totally different cameras, but similar lenses, it can create a cohesive narrative. You have to pay attention to the sequencing of your images. Consider the flow of the story, start with an attention-grabbing image that sets the tone and captures the, viewer, the viewer's interest. But, and also at the same time, sometimes you can keep uh, not visually striking images, but that can act as a transitory images that can, you know, take you from one part of the story to the second part of the story. So here, you know, don't have the ridiculous expectation that every single frame, every single photograph will be visually striking, but it can have other purposes of transitioning different pieces of the story. Remember, the goal is to evoke emotions and convey your message effectively. As you craft the narrative, consider the emotions you want to evoke in your audience. Do you want to inspire empathy, raise awareness, or provoke reflection? So whatever it's migration, environmental issues, or any other subject, remember that the strength of documentary photography lies in its ability to tell a story through a series of images. Pay attention to the sequencing, arranging, pacing, transition, and juxtapositions to evoke emotions and convey your message effectively. 
But before you log off, here's one important note that we'll also dive deep in the following videos. Um, if you do this kind of work often, eventually self-doubt will creep in. So it's really important um, to keep your expectations low. Hear me out. Do not expect too much when you're on the field. Do not put it in your head that, you know, this will be your best work ever because that's not for you to decide. You're there to do your work and it's for the audience to criticize and tell you whether it's this is the best work ever or not. Because your goal is the, to capture the most uh, amazing stories possible, you know, uh, to feed your soul and hopefully others as well. Uh, this is what um, the photographer named uh, Matt Weber or Weber, I don't know how this sounds, uh, had to say when asked about this. But basically I'd say, I don't expect much. By keeping your expectations low, you don't get disappointed. And then when something good happens, you're like, wow, it's, it's rather than coming out, I know I'm gonna kick ass, I'm gonna get two or three great shots today. The odds of that happening are so far, why even, why even pump yourself up? Just, just roll with the punches, see what happens. And if you do get a great shot, the sad thing is when I take a really good shot, it probably only makes me feel better for two or three days because it just goes away and I'm gonna, but I still don't care. You know, even if I take a good shot, it might not be a great shot, but a good shot can sometimes work out in a book or a project you're doing because it might just complement another photograph side by side. Can't expect every shot to be a, an incredible shot, but some of your good shots will find use in books or exhibits or online. You do a sequence of 10 and you know, you know about sequencing 10 photos together. You do it all the time. So it's like not all 10 are equal but they sometimes work together. So, you know, expectations sh shouldn't stop you from doing it. You know, like, man, I've been sucking lately. I haven't really taken any great shots lately. Well, come on, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the game. To recap, develop a strong conceptual framework. The message, the key themes. Do thorough research. Connect with your subjects. Seek unique perspectives. Mix it up, try new things. And finally, craft a narrative with your image. I will leave you with that and hopefully I will see you in the next time. Uh, feel free to share you know, whatever you thought about this. Uh, hopefully I can get more uh, in depth. If you, if you didn't understand anything, let me know in the comment, like and subscribe. And if you didn't really like this, let me know and I will do better next time. Peace.